But let's begin with the Chancellor this afternoon, because Rishi Sunak has referred himself to the independent advisers on ministers' interest. In a letter to Lord Guite, he intends to clarify his wife's non-dom status and why he had a US green card up until the back end of last year. The latest scandal revelations about the Chancellor saw him moving his family out of number 10 over the weekend. And his response to the questions about his wife's tax affairs again appears to have left people asking whether his chances of succeeding Boris Johnson are all but over. Well, joining me to discuss all of this is our political correspondent, Tom Harwood, who is in the studio with me. Tom, good afternoon uh, to you. Complicated story, all of this. Uh, the, the Labour Party essentially saying to, there's a kind of uh, a very simple way to look at it, which is that you've got a chancellor who's in charge of people's taxes uh, and a wife who potentially is not paying the taxes that she should be, if, even if she's not breaking the law, that morally she should be paying in the UK. That's absolutely it. It's the distinction between what's legally needed to be done versus what morally should perhaps be done. And uh, clearly the uh, chancellor has given a bit of a concession away in this area towards the back end of last week week, uh, saying that his wife will give up non-DOM status and will, after all, start paying British tax on foreign income. Now, before she made that move, it did seem like they might well hold out on this issue. It is arguable that someone who has earnings overseas should pay taxes on those earnings where those earnings are earned, rather than everything being paid in this country. Indeed, perhaps double taxation being paid both in India and in the United Kingdom. That's an argument that could be made, and it's one that many governments have made for decades, even centuries. Non-DOM status has been around since the 1700s. And whether it's been a, a Tory, a Peelite, a Pittite, a Whig, a, a, a Conservative or indeed a Labour government. All, yeah. We could go through every single government for the last yeah. uh, however many uh, hundred years and no one's got rid of this status because it does provide a certain benefit to the country. It's better having these international people living here than not. But... The Chancellor well, decided the that was too, wide, too yeah. hard to argue. Yeah. And so you turned on that particular decision. His wife will now be paying tax going forward on all income in the UK, but also back paying for the last year as well. Uh, but clearly this story is dragging on because of this letter to Lord Guy, uh, because of this demand for an investigation. And then we've got this other kind of aspect to it, which is the US green card mm. that the Chancellor himself had. Now, you only get a green card in the United States if you've worked there, but then additionally applied essentially for domicile status, that is, i.e., that is your primary residence. Mm. And yet he still had this green card up until October of last year, even though he'd been Chancellor for 18 months. Yes, it is right to say, however, Rishi Sunak was living in America before he became an, ME, uh, uh, an MP here in 2015. Um, it, it, it seems to be the case that sort of he had this green card for living in the United States and just never really gave it up. It just sort of rolled over and continued. It has to be said that this was brought up at a press uh, briefing in the famous White House uh, West Wing press briefing room um, with Jen Psaki, the spokesperson for uh, uh, Joe Biden, who seemed to dismiss it as an issue, even though technically the words of Green Card say you, your primary residence needs to be the United States. It didn't seem like the White House had that much of a concern with it, but it does add up to this overall picture of is Rishi as slick a politician as everyone had been thinking for the last two years? Yeah, it, or was he a lucky guy in that yeah. he was able to dish out a lot of money to people that made him incredibly popular? And now that he's trying to claw some of that money back to pay for all of that spending, suddenly all these other scandals start to bubble up because he's no longer sort of the politician that no one can touch. And, and, and isn't that the interesting aspect of this, is that even amongst some of his supporters, or certainly Conservative MPs, a feeling that he should have seen some of these things coming, uh, and that actually uh, that, that sense of kind of a political astuteness is, is being called into question. Well, that's quite right. Uh, Rishi Sunak's only been in Parliament since 2015, only joined the Cabinet relatively recently, and then was shot into being Chancellor at the very start of his Cabinet career. This is someone who's relatively new to politics. Still, I mean, all the very accomplished in the private sector before politics, but uh, in terms of his role in Parliament, still relatively fresh faced, and so bumping into these scandals at the top of his game is uh, is a is a worry. And some people are asking the question: uh, Was it the best move to demand this investigation now? Because ultimately, if Rishi Sunak had not asked for this all to be independently investigated and, and probably cleared as he will be, would we be having this conversation today? This